Welcome to Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by, listen, like I tell Lee, what good is watching the games if you're not going to start making money? MyBookie.ag is the industry-leading website that'll hook you up with all your betting needs. You understand me? I mean, why have a winner if you can't put it in with somebody and collect the VIG? That's what I'm talking about. Join now. What I'm going to do for you is this. Go to MyBookie.ag. Take a look. You join now, and my bookie will match your deposit up to 100% bonus. Use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, to activate the offer. Visit mybookie.ag and use promo code CHURCH. You play, you win, you get paid. You watch the game, you put it on mybookie.ag, and you take a nap. You wake up, boom, your money's in the bank. That's what I'm talking about. Go to mybookie.ag, use promo code CHURCH, and they'll match your deposit with up to 100% bonus. Also, this podcast is brought to you by Onnit. Onnit is a leader in supplements from New Mood to Shroom Tech Sport to Shroom Tech Immune. You will be in shock of the results. Go to onnit.com right now and press in. CHURCH. Boom. And get 10% off your first order delivered to your house. Kick this fucking mule, Lee. Filthy Animals, Uncle Joe here, Church of What's Happened Now. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we got Felicia Michaels in house. Hello. What's up, you sexy savage? Oh, everything, Joey. Just being a mom, Just trying being to a fucking, fucking write jokes. mom, write jokes, now do you my got own little, little activities. Fucking movie and a festival. Congratulations. Thank you. I have a documentary uh, in a festival. The documentary is called Pervs, and it's at the La Femme International uh, Film Festival here in Los Angeles this Friday. At the Regal Theaters downtown at 6 o'clock. So if you ain't doing dick, come on down, cocksuckers. It's in a, it's in a real movie theater? Yeah. Yeah, it's that in a real to, movie theater, that yeah. That has to be like the dream of every, anyone who's ever filmed it anything. It's like a real legit movie theater. You get to have popcorn, and it's like, yeah. it's like because everyone, like, you, and it's, it's cool, too, like, if you're in a class, or even if you have, like, a small screening, but to be in, like, a movie theater where, like, no, for I watch sure. Star Wars in here. This is for sure. Yeah, I was in a festival once, and it was, like, someone's fancy garage, and you're like, really? <laughs> yeah, Fuck. no, they suck. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a big one. This, this is a good for me. one. Yeah, it's nice. There's a couple good ones in town that you go to, you buy a pass, and you catch, like, fucking eight movies yeah, the whole weekend. Yeah, for sure, weekend. for sure. You get to see <coughs> stuff you don't normally get to see. Sometimes yeah. that's a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's, uh, nah, you listen, like man, it, you know? That's, that's what those things are for. Yeah. So you get to see different fucking people. You go down there, spend the day. I'm sure it's a women's festival, right? So it is a, a women's festival uh, for women directors and producers. And uh, so Susanna Lee, who is uh, in the movie. Who was on the podcast. Who was on the podcast. Ago. Very funny chick. She, she's kind of the star of the movie. And uh uh, uh, she also helped me produce it, so I was like, I should totally submit to this festival, and we got in. I was I was shocked because the movie's pretty dirty, so it, I was pretty surprised that it got in. You know? It's not that it's dirty; it shows a part 
It shows, listen, you see strip clubs mainstream. You watch uh-huh. movies, right? You watch right. movies all yeah, the time. Yeah, of course. Somebody, they're always going to a strip yeah. club. There's always a hooker involved. There's right. always a chick. We were watching Payback the other day with Lucy Liu. Oh, gotcha. When she whips. Oh, yeah, fucking yeah, Fucking great. Yeah. All that shit is great. Uh-huh. But you never see the crack of porn. And the crack right. of porn is <clears throat> the dollar thing. The put four quarters in the fucking boot. Uh-huh. And the window goes, goes up. up. Right. And people fucking front of you. Wait, I mean, it, was, that, it was only a dollar? When I was a child, when I was 11, 10, you know, <laughs> it was you, a nickel. <laughs> you played hooky and you went down to 42nd Street. And you, you, if you were an asshole, like you went into the, they had these stores that sold IDs and then they also sold maps uh-huh. to the best porno places in Manhattan. Like 1970, you go to, that was the Epicor Center of Sex. Like, you know, it was that and Las Vegas. 42nd Street in New York, which where you walk down now and you see all these fucking Disney things, that was the epicore of sex. When you got off that bus at Port Authority, right across the street from that was where the Laugh Factory went in years ago. Right. On oh, the corner. Okay. Yeah. Before yeah. that was that was Spawn World or yeah. Sex World. Yeah, isn't that Times Square? Now? Yeah, that's Times Square. And when you walk down that thing, I used to get off that fucking bus, you know, and come into from Jersey. And I'd get off that thing and I'd stop there and you know me, dog, I get a hot dog at eight in the morning. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, no. I see an Arab with those fucking tails they sell. Uh-huh. Those cat tails they sell on the stick. Just and they put stop. and they put a little piece of bread on there. You put some Frank's hot sauce, you kill all the germs, you're good to go for two dollars. I would stand and eat those and watch who would who would go in there for uh-huh. sure and who would come out of there. And that's where I was wrong. It wasn't the crack of porn. It was executives. It was oh, yeah. attorneys that go in there, get their fucking, you can't get your dick sucked in there. It's a pool place. It's a pool place. It's one man show. Uh-huh. Unless some some little gay guy's in there and you get to talk about sucking your dick for $3 with an ice cream. Right. In your mouth. <laughs> That's it. I'm telling you the well, truth. No, so I'm telling you the truth. How old were you the first time you actually went into a place like 12. that? Really? 12. And they just would let you in or you have to they, sneak yeah, in? or Listen. It was nineteen fucking seventy something. Yeah. What they didn't see, they didn't know, and they didn't want to know. Mm-hmm. So you walked in, and there was a guy with uh, bin- those tokens. Mm-hmm. He'd have a belt on, like a construction belt. Oh, and belt, make the change. Would make the change for uh-huh. those tokens. Yeah. So if you're eight, if you're thirteen, and you go in there with a dollar bill, they're gonna tell you to get the fuck out of there. But if you're thirteen, you walk in there with a twenty. Yeah. Money talks and bullshit. Well. <laughs> right, right. So I would get Lee's five, my five your son's five and the other five and we go over there uh-huh. and that's how you give me the five come on give me a 20 because when i walk in he's not gonna give me change you guys are gonna be walking behind me they wouldn't proof you so as long yeah. as the guy was busy what i just tell you what he didn't see he didn't want to see so if you were getting stabbed in the corner in those days he wouldn't look up mm-hmm. he would keep making your change right it was one of those dirt that that was the place right there on eighth avenue I'm telling you that that was it. it was so fun. when you went in, did you go by yourself or with your friends the I went first in, time? The first, the first time, time. We went, four of us played hooky. Uh-huh. You know, you're in the eighth grade. You uh, got that shitty weed from High Times. Yeah. You know, High Times <laughs> sells imitation weed in the back uh-huh. in the 70s. They did, yeah. They did. Yeah. So you would send the 395, and then you got back this weed. That didn't, you and your buddies planted, play hooky. And smoke this weed when you went to smoke it. You got fucking beef, Felicia. Fuck. Now what are we going to do? We have plans. Let's go into the city. Uh-huh. So you took a bus into Manhattan. You know, here you are in the seventh grade. How old are you in the seventh grade? Twelve. Yeah, uh-huh. twelve or thirteen. <clears throat> and we'd uh, walk right to Port Authority, and it was like uh, your sensory overload of your ears. Oh, yeah. Once you hit Broadway, yeah. okay, so you got off the bus on 8th Avenue, and you went to the corner, and we'd be giggling, four or five or six kids. Then you crossed the street to 42nd Street and you walked up. Once you came around that turn onto Broadway, there was 50 yards there where you heard it was mind boggling. I wish, you know, I had the audio from those mm-hmm. days. But this is exactly what you would hear. You ready? Marijuana, acid, THC, heroin, perico, 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 marijuana, cocaina. Oye, tengo heroina. In Spanish and English, you would uh-huh. hear this. For five minutes while you were walking, I I never forget walking through the city with my mother, like to go see a Disney movie, like mm-hmm. The Love Bug, and those five minutes were treacherous, and the cops wouldn't do nothing to you. New York City was an adventure for a child, and once you hit Broadway, it was a completely different city. So once you went through fifty yards of marijuana, heroin, cocaine, I got pills, dog, I got pills, dog. Now you stepped into three card Monty land. 
So it was two or three blocks of three-card Monty art actors. And they wouldn't stop when kids were nearby? That was part of it. They wanted to cotton the kids. Yeah, I can't. Kids. <laughs> you think we were pussies the way we are? They didn't give a fuck. You know, 30 years ago, you would smoke with your kid in the car. Oh, yeah. 40 years yeah, ago. Yeah, 40, 50, 60 years ago. No seat. You would smoke while you were pregnant, you know, <laughs> and give your kid paint chips, and they were fine. Are you kidding? When my mom was pregnant with my yeah. brother, they she was overweight. They prescribed speed so she would lose weight while she was pregnant. It was a and then different... he was like a hyperactive kid. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah so you yeah. it would be New York City would be wild. But to get back to Felicia's question, you would tear the back. I would give everybody their five dollars in tokens because they gave you special tokens, <laughs> but they were worth like a quarter a piece. And basically, you got like. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to throw a number at you. Maybe you got 30 seconds per token. Oh, really? Yeah. So here you are with five dollars worth of tokens. <laughs> Did that do all four of you? <laughs> no, no, no. We go into different okay. boots. And then you lock the door. Uh -huh. oh, and you'd God. walk in and your feet would sink into oh, yeah. a half inch of sperm that they just couldn't <laughs> wipe up. Oh, come on, Joey. That so many people jerk off in there at such a oh, high yeah. rate that the sperm would caligulate. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and you would walk in there. And it'd be like, you ever walk in the snow after it's four days old and frozen? <laughs> Like you're, there's different points. I'm not oh, kidding you, Lee. No, he's serious. I'm not kidding you, Lee. And before you went in there, remember, Lee, before you went in there, this is how disgusting. Yeah, none of this sounds fun. No, 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 but it is fun. <laughs> it is fun when you're 12, okay? When you're 12 and you see a guy come out of a room and a little immigrant walk in with a fucking a oh, mop yeah. with hot water and wipe up the cum, and then he puts it back in the, <laughs> in the thing, and he goes, go right ahead. You know, like, you're like, oh, my God. Would, he, would you tip him, like, a, a token or something? No, go away. You're wiping <laughs> cum up for a fucking living. You can't, you're not even invited to the conversation. Oh my what do you do for a living? I'm a janitor at a cum house. <laughs> <laughs> that was this guy's. He got eight bucks an hour insurance. You know. Insurance. It was, and, you know, hot water. I mean, it was steaming, Lee. Oh so the hot water would go in. He'd just plop it on the cum. Go like this, and then put it in the thing and squeeze it. And then you go in there, you put your token in there, and the fucking screen would pop up. Okay, so there would probably be, if it was eight in the morning, if it was ten in the morning. Oh my god! If it was ten in the morning, and there's already a, like a coagulation of cum on the floor. Oh, it's open twenty four hours. Oh, and we never close. We're like fucking the Vatican. We don't close down. We're like the comedy store. Someone we, probably drowned in there once. No, no, yeah, no, 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 Lee. And if you went in there at six, oh it was God. chicks that were hooking, that fucked all night long, and now mm -hmm. went in there for the last twenty dollars, <laughs> and they would be all high and shit, and some guy would be putting a dick in the mouth, and she would be on a circular bed that wasn't even made. It was like a circular bed that. This was, was in the peep show. In the peep show, so you you either went yeah. to the peep shows were either singular or all plural. Right. The plural ones were a circle, so you could I could see Lee. Oh, no. I can look at Lee and <laughs> no. see Lee looking at your pussy and vibrating as he jerked off and shit. And then, after, and then on the way, walking home, Lee, I saw you jerking off and I didn't jerk off. I swear to God, smell my hand. You know, we'd have the creepiest conversations that 12 year olds right. have. It's amazing how stupid you are at 12. Smell my hand and yeah. jerk off. I didn't jerk off. Smell my hand. You know, it was fucking crazy. Oh, my God. But. Then they had the glass. They had first. Let me be clear on this. They had the shield that went up, and it was a bulletproof glass. Oh, thank God. Okay. Same but thing. then there was, if you went into 42nd Street, uh -huh. and you went in those, those were the ones where everything popped up, and you could stick your head in. And she could come over and let you suck really? a tit. Really? Finger her. You know, you could finger her while you jerked off, but you had to, like, put your arm in this little glass. Uh huh. Okay, and she would have to get like on a milk carton, like a like in the bank. <laughs> yeah, and you would be fingering really? and jerking off. Oh my god! You could suck her titties. You could lick her asshole. Like she would have to bend over on the milk uh -huh. cart. And she had just got. <laughs> she had just gotten in <laughs> oh, no. from an. I never went oh. to that one where the head popped up. Oh my god! I never went in where the glass popped it. Right. But so we went the first time. We went back to Jersey. Talked about it. Jesus Christ, bro! They fuck right in front of you. Come on, you're lying. You're full of shit. No, man. They fuck in front of you, and then they have a bed <laughs> no. that's made of wood and it spins. 
Uh-huh. Did I tell you that? So yeah, he would go yeah. around while the guy was fucking her. So, so would he have to move his feet like everything? No, no, no. no. He oh, would he be was on actually platform, on the platform with her. And the platform, platform would spin around. Uh-huh. And she'd be on heroin. Uh-huh. And he'd just be fucking her. And she wouldn't know where she'd be. And then while he was fucking her, there'd be three chicks going around. Like if a bunch of chicks came, uh-huh. then it was like a suckathon. A <laughs> so, no. Suck my tit for a quarter. You know, oh, you could suck a chick's tit for wow, a quarter. Wow, wow. But... Then I went back. We started going back, 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 and I t- went with a kid who today is a cop in San Diego. And this fucking knucklehead stuck his head in and didn't put enough quarters in. Oh, no. So the thing closed, and they had to call an ambulance. We all left him there. We didn't know nothing. Yeah. We don't know nothing. I still remember them dragging him out. Where are you guys? We don't know nothing. We just ran. Oh, no. God, how would you like that hanging on you for the rest of high school? So that was the bottom level. Yeah. When you made the turn up, oh, Felicia, I'm looking you in the eye, and I'm uh-huh. telling you this because you have boys, and I just wanted to let you know how happy you didn't raise your boys in New York at this time. So now, <clears throat> as you walked up, as you got close to Caroline's, uh-huh. I didn't know it was Caroline's. I'm not going to say I don't know nothing about right. comedy, though I give a fuck about comedy. But as you got up in those streets, all those bars, where those bars where I come in, There'd be a black guy outside or a hot chick, and she'd go, come on in. Felicia, do you know how many times they drug us in when we were seventh and eighth grade? Really? And yeah. you'd go right up to the bar. Uh-huh. You guys old enough to grip? Hell yeah, we old enough to drink. And strippers come right up to you and sit next to you, and you could feel their leg. We would be like fucking <laughs> 12, and these women were 40. They had been right, blowing right. guys for years. They were at the tail end of their hooking career. You could feel their leg. And then they go, we could have a date, but you have to buy me a bottle of champagne. And it was a little, little bottle. Oh. <laughs> okay, and here you are in the seventh grade, and they come right. back with a $41 tab. And you're like, give me that. You ain't drinking that $40. I ain't got $40. And then they would yeah. throw you out. Right. We did that at all those places. Yeah. Where they would call us and think about that. Uh-huh. That's how raw yeah. New York City was in the seventies. I can I can imagine yes. that, Joey, because when I uh, I'm an army brat, so I grew up uh, <clears throat> in Berlin. My mother was from Berlin. My father was in the service, and when they got divorced, we lived on the street called Potsdamer Strasse, which was like the, one of the main streets in Berlin. And in the 70s, it was at the same time as what you're talking about. There were prostitutes and hookers all over the place. And it was like just out in the out open. Of control. Out of control. And one time I was walking home from school or something, and this prostitute ran to catch the bus. <clears throat> but, you know, you could tell she's a prostitute. And her uh, uh, necklace fell off. And I picked it up and I gave it to my mom for Mother's Day. <laughs> And I still have that fucking necklace from some hooker How crazy. in Berlin. But it but it was very raw back then. Raw. They didn't raw. care how they old you were. Yeah, yeah. You know, in those days, a lot of kids I hung out with, their dads would take them into the city to get laid for the first time, just to get yeah, it out of the way. That's kind of weird. That was very big yeah. back then. Wait, Nobody uh, ever did it with me. At yeah. what age? 14. Oh, no. Yeah, just that's, to get it out of the that's way. Could really, a lot of yeah. kids I grew up with would yeah. tell me I love it. What about the poor prostitute? I mean... Fifty dollars is fifty dollars. <laughs> Maybe they she didn't do it a lot. Maybe they didn't do it a lot because they got. Maybe too they scared. had the real young ones do it. Like I can't imagine like a thirty year old. I'm sure they uh, drug out the oldest yeah, one. Those yeah. days when yeah. I was growing up, especially when I was growing up in Manhattan, Spanish families. A lot of the Spanish when their dads would take them right down to get laid. Oh really? To get it out of the way. Yeah. So that's it. We don't have this problem going on. You want to fuck your brother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, uh, it's so, you know, sexuality is so weird, right? Like, like I see when you when you're a mom and you have kids and you see like like one child is more sexual in nature than another child. Who's to say like what is uh, deviant behavior in sex and what is not deviant behavior in sex? And uh, to bring it back to the movie, when Susanna uh, uh, Lee who's a comedian and sex worker on the side. She was working at the Venus Fair uh, 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 show there, a peep show. It's the last working peep show in the Los Angeles County area because a lot of that stuff is going away, you know? And she's like, oh, I want to do this. I have this idea for a web series. I want to interview comedians, and we want to talk about deviance and sexuality and all that. Do you want to be a part of that? And I was like, yeah, I want to be a part of it. I think that's really just out of the park. And um, as a lot of people kind of know, I was a stripper when I was 18. So for, so for me, it was like, fuck, yeah, I want to go see the inside 
to one of those. I want to go. And then she had a girl that was uh, filming it, but the girl didn't know what she was doing. And then before I went for my interview, she's like, oh, no, we can't do it because it's fucked up. All the footage. They had Margaret Cho and everything got screwed up. And I said, uh, if I uh, bring, you know, fund it, will you let me direct it? And so that's how I got into doing pervs. And so we made, made this web series starting to make it. And we have a Paul Provenza. You came and did it. Felipe Esparza came and did it. A lot of women. Lori Kilmartin came and did it. All these people came and did it. And it was such an interesting thing. Because you would, like Jimmy Schubert did it, you would think there were people that could come into the booth and be interviewed by a comedian about comedy and deviance. And she gives them a peep show at the same time. You would think how boisterous some of the guys are that they'd be able to deal with it. And it was really cool to see who can really deal with it and who can't. And who is a secret perv and who isn't. You know what I mean? And it's so way different than what you expect. Like you're talking about your friend that is now a policeman in San Diego. Like you guys went through this really creepy, deviant teenage period. And how for some people... Uh, it's not their lifestyle, even though they experiment with it. And, and I can't even imagine being 13 and 14 and my first uh, time at sexuality is at a place like that. I can't even imagine. What do you take away from that? How fucked up it must make you in the, in a sense, right? But all of that to me is so fascinating. And not even that you just saw sex, because that would have blown my mind. But like porn stars, for the most part, are very like good looking. You saw, like, people who were drugged up. Like, what did the guy look like? The guy couldn't have been yeah, a, a Well, he a must model. have been on drugs, too, right? It was just, uh, <laughs> you know, and then I ordered porn. Like, a little, you know, when I lived in Jersey, those kids were active. Active in every single way, that whole neighborhood. And it was always, like, we were always up to something. And that was one of the things we were up to. We went after porn. Again, when we were younger, Felicia and I, you could go into the back of a penthouse and get three... Um, what Super Eight? Oh right, right. Super right. Eight. It was uh -huh. called Real to Real, three point movies for twenty dollars, and they sent you a little fucking makeshift projector that was a piece of shit. <laughs> right. So that was another thing we did. We ordered that one time, and we took it up to my attic, and we watched them. And it was, I wish that porn was still around to show people what porn from the late 60s and 70s look like <laughs> was not gentle it was just <laughs> horrific yeah. it was that stuff was horrific it was just mortifying the more i think about it today i'm like yeah i even wrote a bit about it that gave it a little justice i liked the bit because i would say jesus i gave that such a funny take but it wasn't funny it was so unfunny that one of the younger kids in the room started crying uh, like yeah, that's how unfunny yeah. it was like the guy's dick was big she put fucking jelly on it and put two pieces of white bread on his dick <laughs> no, no, her tits no. had been sucked out felicia oh. they looked like men's tits like uh -huh. looked like my chest she must have been 23 you know uh she didn't she wasn't missing teeth but she had an overbite you could hear the director giving her instructions, like, suck the dick. Oh, And she no, would go, no. Really? <laughs> like, no. no. Like, want to no. Oh. Like, she would have, like, it was crazy. Yeah. And then he would put the dick in her face, and then she would grab it, and the guy's dick was gigantic. Like, that's when they made super dicks. Like, 16 inches. Like, this thing was this big. Oh, my God. <clears throat> and that's what they settled on. Her uh -huh. putting jelly and peanut butter and jelly, getting a piece of... Like, she put two pieces of bread out, and there was still six inches hanging out of his dick. Right. Like, that's how big this guy's dick was. We all sat there like, turn it off. And that was that. Do you think when you guys were doing it at that age, obviously you have a uh, tremendous curiosity, curiosity. Right? and an curiosity. urge, but do you think that it got to the point where you guys were ordering films and doing all that just because it's uh, one-upping each other and just no, in a we group do it, trying we, to... We do it together as partners. All those little right. scams. But just egging each other on? Yeah, like, And then we got, as we, like, once we got the freshman year, that same crew was together. And now we'd add, now we'd raise the stakes on that trip. We'd snort angel dust. Jeez. And then watch porn? No, go into the city. Oh, okay, gotcha. No, and then go so his, get some porn. He has <laughs> six, porn. <laughs> six 14 year old, maybe one 15 year old uh -huh. on angel dust. Which is just a blur. 
So then I would go, listen, what, you want me to even raise the stakes more? Oh, no. All right, here's what we're going to do. You, Lee, and Felicia, I'll see you guys later. What do you mean? Me, Carlos, and Jimmy are going to go this way. We'll meet you at 4 o'clock at Port Authority on 181st Street. It's 48th Street. We're going to meet you in three hours. Nah, it's 11. We're going to meet you in five hours. We take the A train. Kids, you know how many things could have happened to you? Do you have any fucking idea, Felicia? A trains, getting on the A train to the Bronx with junkies nodding. And you're on the train with three of us, like, giggling and shit. But I'd been going to the city since the fifth grade. Fourth right. grade. That was what I did on the weekends. My mom had no fucking idea. What would you do up there? In the city? In when the I was Bronx. A, walk around, get yeah. a slice of pizza. Like, you have no fucking idea what could yeah. happen to you up there in those days. Did you just say you snorted angel dust first? Yeah, we'd snort angel dust first. We got into <laughs> angel dust the end of freshman year. You're talking like it's normal, but then... Yeah. It was huge. It was $10 for a oh, bag, yeah. and three people could get high. I mean, fucked up. What kind of what kind of high was that like? Gumby. Meaning? Ten Valiums. It's like eating a bunch of Valiums, and all of a sudden your life is flashing like... The whole day is just flashing. Like, you're just flashing. You're fucking uh-huh. high. You know, you're Gumby. That's what we call it, Gumby dust. You were just Gumby. Yeah. And we'd walk those streets in New York, get involved in Three Card Montes, take an A train, get off by see the Sinai over 165th Street. We'd walk around there. We'd see if we'd get weed. You know how many fucking things could happen to you when you're 13 and trying to get fucking weed in the city? And we'd get it. And then we'd go up to the platform. They would show up. we go to OTB, mm-hmm. off-track betting, go in there. You know how many things that happen to you in there? That's pedophileville. Right. Off-track betting is pedophileville. What's in that time period, what's the worst trouble you guys ever got into? And not trouble like where you got caught, but the worst situation where you had fear of, like, this is going At those strip clubs, when the yeah. women would lure you in, and you go in there and sit next to them at the bar, uh-huh. and then they come with a bottle of champagne. Those bottles are 20-something bucks, man, and the fucking bouncers would go, what the fuck, you guys don't have no money. Empty your fucking pockets. So we'd go in there with some money already in our socks. Uh-huh. Like, we were just fucking, you know, crazy. At that age, you know, we, but I still remember, like, just, we've talked about those peep shows before. That mm-hmm. was why when you did the film, I was uh-huh. very interested. I go, wow. And that was an older style. That one had a thick bulletproof glass. Yeah, it had a glass <coughs> and had the, the machine. You have the phone. When's the last time you've seen the machine where you stick the money the in? The money in, and, yeah. uh, and what, the, the great thing about that movie, like, we had Rick Shapiro and... Uh, when we started assembling it for the web series, there were some people, like there was a guy, Ed Galvez, he giggled through the whole thing. Like to me, he was like Lee. He just giggled through, like you couldn't even talk to him because he just couldn't <laughs> stop giggling. It was like, here is a grown ass man and he would and would just giggle. Jimmy Schubert was just, you know, as uh, as orange as a carrot, he looked like Donald Trump. That's how embarrassed he would get. But it, tur- it turned out that there were some people uh because people were pretty funny about the stories and talking about deviants. And then Rick Shapiro, do you know Rick Shapiro? Yes, yes. So Rick Shapiro did the interview, and his interview was so uh, real. And he talked about how he, because he was kind of a deviant living in New York uh, as a young kid, and he had a lot of stuff happening to him. And he talked about, during that time period, about being kind of uh, his father was physically abusive against him and how it turned him into a deviant and 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 when I talked to Susanna after that and when we looked at the footage it's like god I really can't use this in like a comedy web series because it's hard, it's kind of heartbreaking yeah, yeah, to, hard, to even yeah. watch and then Susanna was like you know when we did that that moment had the most effect on me because it made me understand because when she, when we got everyone to do it right, because uh, I, as a former stripper from when I was younger, you know, when, here I am filming someone who's a comedian who's going to show everything to all comedians that she respects and have this conversation with them. And as a woman, I have to be very generous to what she's comfortable with and what she's not comfortable with and the amount of trust that she had to have 
six, seven cameras on her while she's completely naked in this mirrored. You were there. It's like a completely yeah. mirrored semicircle and with glass and everything. So nothing gets hidden. And to go through that experience and, and to see someone uh, really be profoundly affected by Rick Shapiro's story and understanding why she's deviant and... You know, I can't just throw any slob in front of her. She's doing a very personal thing. She didn't want to interview Rick Shapiro at first because Rick was kind of known as a crazy guy and could go off. And she got really nervous about it. And I was like, no, this guy's from the street. we got to get people that are from the street that understand what you're doing and, and w- want to appreciate it. And when he came, he was so generous to her in spirit and about sharing a real story where other people didn't want to be. You know, sometimes you get people right on your podcast and you want to, and they're like all jokey jokey all the time. And you're like, you want to have a real fucking conversation every once in a while, right? So that's kind of what it was where he was having the real conversation and it totally shifted the project. And then when we were looking at it, I was like, we can't use this in the web series, but maybe we should put this in as a documentary film about you revealing yourselves as your real person and what you do and and your struggle in comedy and and how everyone perceives you and what how everyone's deviant how everyone's deviant in a different way you know what i mean how everyone's little twist is different your twist is way different than lee's twist right you know but to explore that and and to have women uh uh, go sit through it and have a discussion about it too, as well as men, as well as uh, you know, uh, uh, someone who's gay or whatever the situation is. And it turned out into a really cool project. So it's very curious when people start talking about their first experiences with sex. Like my ears open up wide because then having boys and hearing you talk about these stories, when my boys started looking at porn on the computer. And the therapist is like, you you got to really supervise that and try to shut it down as much as possible because it really affects you. Do you think going through this period definitely, of your life definitely. affected and, and your sexuality? Let me tell you something. With me, it even, you know, I grew up in a man's bar. My mother had a man's bar. So the comments, you know, when I was 10, they were already shooting comments at me. You know, a little, are you still pissing sweet? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, how's how Cubans ask you, are you coming yet? You know, like they would say, you got a girlfriend yet? What's going on? So it lifted my curiosity. That's when it lifted my curiosity. When I was a kid and those people would ask me creepy fucking questions. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just, I was always an innocent before that. Mm-hmm. I knew about it. I knew about it. You know, I knew about getting your dick sucked in the first grade because the, the kids in New York would talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the time, that was the era where kids would go, and I, I kissed some girl's titties for a quarter one time in the playground. She put one of those 45s, you know, like, uh, uh-huh. you know, the 45s. <laughs> really? And then her little... We were in the park. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, for a quarter, I'll let you kiss it. Uh-huh. And I was like, Jesus Christ, for a quarter? And I kissed him. I remember going home, scratching my head the rest of the day. Why'd I give a quarter for that? Nothing happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you, what do you think's going to happen? You know, like then, then I was cool with it. And then that shit. And then all of a sudden, at like the age of 12, they opened up this valve on you. Like this valve opened up on me. And shortly after that, I fell in love. But I didn't like the whole sexual thing about it. Right. I really loved this girl. In fact, all I did with her was dry hump. I never sucked the titties. Nothing. I could have taken the titties. I never sucked the titties. Uh-huh. Never fingered her. Every time I would touch her, it would be through the jeans. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So I wasn't really, because of the cat, the Catholic part of me. Yeah, he's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry oh, about him. He's going to make noises and make grunts. <laughs> I still had the Catholic. Did noise in it? Yeah, I still had the Catholic <laughs> part of me challenging me. Yeah. So the Catholic part of me was scaring me. I already heard shit on the street. We got to investigate this, but not really. Yeah. You follow me? I'm going to investigate this, but very mildly. I'm not going to be like the other fucking savages. Right. And it was, now that you talk about it, the different age things, like, and Okay, when I got to McKinley, when I got thrown out of Catholic school, I went to McKinley school. So I was there in the sixth grade. The seventh grade, I used to hang out on the 26th Street side. 
And there were these two kids that would work during the week at their father's whatever. Uh-huh. Whatever. They were 13 and whatever. They worked Monday through Friday. And on Saturdays, they'd get up and tell their mom they were going to Bergen Line to buy clothes. But not really. They would get on the bus and head to the Bronx or Brooklyn and go to different prostitute houses. And they would come back to school on Monday. So we were young kids. Uh-huh. How seventh, old were those kids? Seventh grade. Wow. Yeah. And his brother was a little slow. His uh-huh. brother was a little half a momo. But in those days, they didn't put you in different classes. They just put you together. Mm-hmm. But since they were Cuban, they didn't really get learn the language. They were both in the seventh grade together. <clears throat> Even though Alberto was older than Juan. But on Mondays, we would gather around him. And they would tell us the most disgusting stories you ever heard in your life. And Juan would be the narrator. But his brother would just go, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? And they would break down the whole thing. How they wow. walked into a house, and the chick would approach him. And then she'd bring him into, like, a bigger type room, and him and his brother could pick the girls. Then they'd go into different rooms, and the chick would take a bucket out and wash his dick, scrub it down, no condom. Oh, my God. Yeah. No condom. I, do, I don't think the soap, Remember, this soap is, doesn't anything. This is 1977. Yeah. You yeah, know, we were we were still seven years away from AIDS. Yeah, you know we had no knowledge of AIDS. All we thought was we could either get crabs, that other shit you got, and you went to the doctor and they gave you pills, and you were back to right. the slinging dick right. with a little weird smell to your dick. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so that was it. So they would tell us how they would go there and get. I remember him saying around the world the first time, I fucking oh, died right? of laughter. That was the first person ever that I yeah. heard that term. I go, so what do you pay? And he goes, uh, $10, they fuck you straight. They get on top of you and fuck you till you uh-huh. come. You come in them for an extra $2. Jeez. Or you could wear a condom. Like, you know, just fucking different yeah. prizes. Yeah. And then, I, and then I go, like, what else? And then they go, for like 15 you can eat them. For 20 25 you're getting around the world. He goes, I did that one time. It was uncomfortable. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, it was just for twenty five wow. hours you getting around the world. Yeah. I wonder what ever happened to those boys. Uh I don't know. Yeah. Nothing good. I, lost, I don't think. No, I lost contact with them in high school. They were yeah. they were like mechanics or something. They were very good with their hands. Yeah. So but but that's not what we're talking about. The main thing was that lifted everybody around to curiosity. Mm-hmm. But now we decided how we were gonna do it. You had no options. I could do it like them. I could uh, go to one of those clubs in the city. Or I could just get a girlfriend. You follow me? So mm-hmm. that's that's part of being 13. Now you decide how you want to do it. That tells a lot about you at the right. age of 13 or 14. You know? Me, I was scared of all that stuff. Yeah. I was petrified. Well, because it's scary. I never the talked whole a big game scary. about it. I yeah. avoided the conversation. Yeah. Like after the porn movie, I was done. Yeah. <clears throat> I was done. And then years later, I got involved in a car ride that uh-huh. I couldn't get out of. It was the kid's birthday. And as I'm going, I'm, they're going to the 1040 Club. Yeah. So now I'm in the car with them. And that was it. I lived it fully that night. That was the most disgusting thing that's ever happened to me. That was, I paid $10 to get raped. Yeah. Like, I left there, I didn't want to have sex for a year right. or two. Like, that's it. Well, that's the, uh, also, and, and I don't mean to deflect from your story, because that reminds me, no, uh, because in... I had to look at it that way. I haven't looked at it that way in a that's long time. Because in the movie, Gene Pompa shares a story about going to a kid's house, and it was a brother and a stepsister, a stepsister, and that the brother would make this, and they were only like a year or two apart. I think they were like 12, 13, 14 ish. And how they had sex, and then they kind of made Gene have sex or whatever. And the way he was telling the story, it was a funny story. But at the end of the story, you're like, fuck, dude, that's molestation. Like, that is, you guys are fucking each other up. You know what I mean? And obviously, something is going on at that house if they're dragging someone else into it. But when you when you when men talk about things that happen, they tend to romanticize it and make it funny. But then when you have them in an intimate uh, uh, moment and they're sharing the story with you, and the funniness goes away, you're like, no, that's 
someone really molested you. You know, and I don't mean it like everyone's molested and everyone's raped. I'm just saying it's no, you, it's a different. It's thing. a different. You, know, you don't even get what you're doing. When you I went to the yeah. 1040 Club, it was such a shocking experience that it, you know, like it was like that. That's too right. real for me. Yeah, I wasn't ready for it. It's like when I bought Master Reality by Black Sabbath. <laughs> I really like him, but this is a little too yeah. real for me right now. <laughs> My mom just died. I just did yes, fucking yes. crystal fucking THC. Yes. The exorcist is on the other TV. This is a bit fucking we have you right <laughs> yeah, now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> when I went over to the city that night and I saw that degree of prostitution that night yeah. as a 16-year-old. Let's, let, let's, let's clock it at 16-year-old. A fucking comedy store main room. Take the tables out. Take the stage out. Put two bartenders at each corner selling the four light alcohols and soda that taste like shit. They cut the booze, and two hundred guys waiting to get their dicks up, and there's forty women in there. Mm-hmm. It was fucking traumatizing. Yeah. And I also learned about men. If there was two hundred men in there, one hundred eighty of those guys that were very braggadocio. These are the guys in the corner that would never fuck a prostitute, that everybody wants to suck their dick. They all had cologne on. They all were done to the nines spectacularly. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. They were all shaved, their hairs, and I learned a lot that night on the other side yeah. of about a braggadocio man. That mm-hmm. here they are paying $10 just how I am. And I'm not even sexually experienced. These were the guys that were always sexually experienced and they had women eating their fucking ball sack and, you know, and all this shit. And here they are standing right next to me waiting for the same fucking dirty pussy I'm waiting on. Yeah. Like, I left there that night disgusted in manhood and disgusted in women. Like, that whole night just right, shocked me. Like, right. And it was great. It was a great age to get disgusted at. Yeah. At that time, I was maybe, yeah, like I said, 16, maybe, I don't know. I wasn't driving. Yeah. I wasn't driving. It's just that uh, I know uh, for my own self, my introduction to sex was uh, all within my own control because my parents, which I feel very fortunate about and have a f- a fun and fond memories of being a little kid and my parents had in this box in the hallway closet True Detective magazines and Playboys. And I can remember from the age of like 8 to 12 going in and then once I found it, you know, uh, going in and just looking at the pictures and really digging. And I'm not into chicks anyway, but just really thinking how beautiful they were and how like excited it made me feel. You know what I mean? And so I I love that I had that introduction, gentle introduction to sex. Like I have a friend who her experience with that obviously was way way different, and uh, I'm always curious like how does it affect people later in life, their sex life later. And when I was 18 and I started stripping, for me it didn't because I had such a my parents w- weren't weird about sex and it was out in the open. My mother was German, so like when I was a kid, we go to the park, people sunbathe with their boobs hanging out in Germany when I was a kid in the 70s. And and so growing up and and without shame involved with sex uh, is a powerful thing. And when I was a stripper, it, it wasn't a negative for me. It was a, an empowering thing for me. You know what I mean? Because I didn't have a lot of power growing up and my parents got divorced. And, you know, everyone has a sob story, right? But to at that time as a girl, no one gave a shit what you said or what you thought. You were just, you know, a stupid girl. And to then become at the age of 18 a stripper and to understand the power Guys are of that. Cigarettes and yeah, the power of rubbing it. Your feet. They're suddenly fucking listening to you. I mean, one out in one ear and out the other. That's a really empowering thing. And what was so curious to me when Susanna was first talking about doing this project uh, was like I, I'm so interested in that with other people, you know, like what her experience of that is. And because she's uh, been doing like uh, burlesque or stripping or other stuff, I'm, I'm very curious how it, uh, why are you laughing? But how it uh, affects her and affects how people see her, you know what I mean? The whole project was so interesting in that Speaking way. Speaking of effect, guess who came to my show Saturday night? Who? In Tampa. Who? My ex-girlfriend, the stripper. Oh, really? It's a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> and how's she doing? 
you know, she's always been a sweet kid, but I'm no fucking uh, Dex Dexter. You know, I never claimed to be fucking Mel Gibson or uh, what's the other guy, Zach? Uh, what's the good-looking guy? Is that Efron? Yeah, I'm no Zach Efron. <laughs> Boy, she looked rough. Oh, really? And Didn't you say she's still stripping? I think she still strips once. Really? But I, I, I can't see anybody giving her a dollar. Yeah. Like, you just give a change. <laughs> it, it was it was not bueno. When I was a stripper when I was 18, there was this woman, and she, used to, and she yeah. was like 50. Yeah. And she would also always dance to Men at Work, the, the, the Down Under song or whatever. I just met them. Oh, the you one did? guy lives on Laurel Canyon. I met oh, my, you did? My kid's party, like a kid's party. That's he was hilarious. the guitar player. When I went and looked him up. I'm like, wow. But she would always wear like that a weird bathing suit. And, and she was like 50-something years old. And just a little roly-poly lady. And she would dance to that men at work. And you'd be like, fuck, I don't want to be that chick. Scary. No. Yeah. You know, even uh, the wrestler. She was great in that. She yeah. played it really cool. She knew she was over the hill when she was competing, but she was still in there every night yeah. selling that little ass. And one night they just got to her and she quit a job, but she did it. It's a, what a weird thing to do or not to do. Like, you and I have had this discussion uh -huh. for years of the longevity of a stripper. You know, it's three years, and you get the fuck you out of there. You can't do it longer than getting a, a degree somewhere. <laughs> and a new house. And, you yeah. know what I mean? But there is a toll. I see the toll. I Drugs and is. alcohol, that shit speeds up your life bad. Quick, you know, mm -hmm. quick. You go from zero to fucking 60. You know, women, I mean, you, we see it. All that shit's always shocked me. I think that what ruined me sexually... <clears throat> was those years of doing coke and fucking having sex. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I think those years fucked me up because that blow after six in the morning, when you're just throwing them around, I would just throw, whoever I was with, I'd just throw them around. Uh -huh. I wouldn't even talk. Uh -huh. I was just an animal. You just put them into position and fucking lick their ass, whatever. And then years later, you can't do that shit no more. You can't. <laughs> They throw you in jail for that type of yeah. shit. Handcuffing people. What are you going to do, Felicia? Time moves. Time moves Time quickly. Moves. Well, when you guys were talking about uh, walking into the uh, uh, glory hole place in New York City and how your feet would sink into... It reminded me the first time I walked, because the first place I ever worked out, I did a wet t-shirt contest at the Peppermint Lounge. And, and the first time I walked in there and my feet hit the carpet... It was exactly that where uh, your foot, like, where you could hear your foot crunchy, <coughs> right? It's crunchy, but sticky at the same time. It's like, and it smells, it's the worst smell on the planet. That, those places, and, I, you know, I went in there and jerked off a few times. I mean, sometimes you go in there after a good Coke binge the whole night, and you got that old sperm in your nutsack. Oh, no. You thought you were going to bang this chick, but all of a sudden she hit you at 5 in the morning when she had a period and it just started, and she didn't think it was a good idea, so you're like, fuck! I just snorted an 8-ball when she threw a curveball at me, so now I got to find another victim, and you get off the bus in New York, and you're like, sex! And your mind starts racing, and you go in there. But I also f would stand outside and just look at the people that were going there. Like right now, okay, where you shot this uh -huh. was considered North Hollywood. It's so, north, It's way deep in North Hollywood on Lancashire. On Lancashire, yeah. okay. <coughs> I believe it or not, if you have a conversation with Susanna, she has regulars that yeah. would go oh, in there. Yeah. You know, and I guarantee you, the, if 10 regulars, seven and a half of them are married. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And you sit there and look and go, okay, what would a married guy want to go and go into a booth with a chick, maybe spend $22 in singles to talk to her, mm -hmm. you're not really going to have sex with her, right? Right. You're on the other side you're of the You're on the glass. other side so of the glass, So she plays yeah. with herself. You take your dick out. Yeah. Which I can't take my dick out no more because now I think there's always a camera. <laughs> See, 30 years ago, I'd take my dick out cameras. anywhere. Oh, yeah. I'd take that goose out and show it to you. Fuck, let's get the party started. What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was one of those guys. <laughs> 28 to 35, I just took the helmet out and oh, no. cleaned the lint off right in front of you. I was like, <laughs> Jesus. 
I take the lint out of the turtleneck right in front of you. I was like a Jew. I'm laughing because I've, I've seen yeah. your dick many times. <laughs> hilarious. Hilarious how you can't even take your dick out no more and show it to somebody. Oh, no. And say, what else are you going to do tonight? Give it a shot. Columbus did. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what's so weird about that place is... <laughs> At the Venus Fair, the backdrop of where the men are sitting is actually marble, white, um, black marble with white streaks on it. And you're oh like, God. did they do this by design? Oh, my God. <laughs> like, Felicia's down to party. Like you, you, <laughs> Felicia took the picture for this uh, for the documentary cover. Like, oh, that's right, of your penis. No, the, oh, that's right. That's, that's right. right. And you know for what? The CD. Yeah, no, I covered I, my nuts. CD? Yeah, for one of those things. I think I thought it was a documentary. One of those. I don't even yeah. know. We went into the <laughs> church. We snuck into the church and took pictures there. Yeah, but we didn't do the penis picture in the no, church. We no, did we did it there. in my <laughs> my garage in the corner. <laughs> And the way I said it, I go, Felicia, you got a minute, get your camera. Know, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you never tell nobody nothing. When Felicia turned around, I had my pants down, and I had my dick hidden, and I just had my nutsack hanging there. And she just looked at them for a second, <laughs> trying to figure out the lighting. Don't move. Let me get it in focus. <laughs> there was no hesitation at all. And she kept saying, Joey, don't move. <laughs> Don't come to our But dream. no, and I had those pictures on my computer, and then one day my <laughs> kids saw them, and they were like, what the fuck? And I was all like, it's a long story. <laughs> Did you have them labeled? Do you know who they were? No. Oh, I think I might have actually told them, because oh. they were like, what? who are you going out with? Oh, and I, I think I said, oh, Joey had me take a picture. <laughs> I think I told them, which was probably not comforting at all. <laughs> They're like, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. so hilarious! Hilarious! Oh my god! Oh, anyway, so uh, but that place there is so crazy, and to have cameras going and people come in while the cameras were going and go into the other rooms of the other girls, they didn't. It's like you could point; they don't care. They want to get in there, get their business done. But and it's a very interesting dynamic for are, sure. Are you allowed to take your dick out of these places? Oh. For sure. Oh yeah. Please, for sure, for sure. It's encouraged. Yeah, yeah, for no, sure. The more it, your dick comes out, the more dollar bills come out. Yeah, but it's they a proven fact. But they have signs up that say no masturbation, but uh, that's what everyone does. What are you supposed to do? Just take it out and just. That's weird. They do it right there and there, yeah. So Felicia, yeah. I like you've been a stripper and then you've also been married. Like, uh huh. Is it? What do you, and, you, and you were talking about how some of his regulars are were married. Like, what do you, what's your opinion on going to strip clubs when you're like married? Oh, well, because I'm at my age where I am, it's completely different. If I, my opinion now, as okay. opposed to my opinion being like thirty and married, gotcha, and okay. just having a baby, I probably have pretty poor opinions about it. But to me, it's kind of it's. Uh, I think it's different in different cultures that you're in and i think uh i'd be more angry about the money being spent than i would about you know ha meeting your guy friends there and uh, having a drink and you know uh getting a table dance like yeah that's kind of weird but i would be okay and i've been on the other side of it but i think i would be if i was married in that situation situation and someone habitually did that i'd be more mad about the money being spent because it's a lot of money right Wait, how much money do people usually usually spend well it's all different because when i did it uh i'm no spring chicken so it was in the late 80s and so it's all different uh all over uh Everywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you been to a strip club, right? How much did you spend? No. You've never been to a strip club? No. Are you serious? Ever? Ne I just went up here. The other, not, I haven't been up there about three months. That's my little spot. Where is that? Off the of Laurel Canyon in Victory. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. It's open till five. Jesus. And when you go in, what do you do? What's like, do you have a whole process? I'm fucking embarrassed. Yeah. It's like... Do you sit at the bar, chat up the ladies first? There's always those there's, guys. There's no bar. There's yeah. like a bar where they sell water. So you go over there, you got to give them a, get, get a, get a bottle of water and a receipt. And you sit there and you just watch. And it's fucking, uh, I don't know. 
I don't even know how to describe it. Like, when you it's go not there, like my but dick doesn't get hard. Uh huh. Do I get a dance or something like that? You know. So when you go there, like, what is the the purpose of doing that? Is it to relax? Is it yeah, to yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, I go to a strip club to relax. I go no, to, no, I, I'm totally you go to serious. to see somebody's fucking pussy yeah. that you haven't seen before. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know, but that's right relaxing, that's right? It. No, you just want to get even. <laughs> Maybe you ate an edible and went the wrong uh-huh. way, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> when you ate it, you were mad at your kid or something. Now you're in the mood to see somebody's fucking pussy that you haven't yeah. seen before. Uh-huh. And you go to the store and you have this burst of energy, guys, and you know what, man? Uh, yeah, I went from one extreme in my life to the other. Like, I was one guy that would, you didn't know when I was coming in. Mm-hmm. Like, that was just me. I could walk in at 10, I could walk in at 2 in the afternoon, or I could walk in at 3 that night, you know? Now, I'm home at 10 o'clock. Like, that's a, a way we got home at 11.15. We stopped at Yum Yum Donuts. Yeah. And I, it's, there's nights, Lee stays home, and I'm back over the hill at 10.15, and you're like, Really? Really? Yeah. So you need to take Lee and go to like Cheetahs. You got to take Where's Lee. Where's Cheetahs? That's, Cheetahs is like on Sunset. Isn't that's where it? you filmed. Uh, this is not happening. Yeah. No, I don't like the Sunset ones. You don't? No, the Swinger. Uh, the one on La Brea is the most popular one in Hollywood. That's where if you go there five nights a week, you'll see movie stars in there. Uh huh. You'll see all the hot chicks. The Kardashians go there. Oh, they you know. do? Yeah. Yeah, Crazy Girls. Uh-huh. Crazy Girls is the one. Uh-huh. That's the one on on, uh, on La Brea. And then the ones on La Cienega and the one on Sunset before you hit uh, the Purple Veil, the Pink Veil, whatever the veil. Oh. The Ninth the Veil. The Ninth Veil, yeah. That's or been there the for the Seventh Veil. The Seventh yeah, Veil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always been there since uh-huh. I moved here. So when I moved here, I moved here with a girl that danced at the one on La Cienega uh-huh. and the Seventh Veil. She'd switch in between both of them. So during the weekends, at night, she'd work on La Cienega, and during the week, she'd work at that Seventh Veil. So when she would go to work, did did you have any attachment to what she was doing at all, or you just kind of were like... Uh, you could compartmentalize it like that's just for like 18 months it bothered me but at the same time I'd be a hypocrite because she was giving me money to do comedy Mm -hmm. and I was always clipping her for a 20 or a 30 (laughs) or maybe a 40 you know what I'm saying oh my god you were annoying (laughs) oh my god she put a bunch of money on the table and go count it Uh and I just drop 20s on the floor and step on them (laughs) wow what are you gonna do you know what I'm saying you gotta pimp a hoe out Oh, you got to pimp a whole lot. So when pimp. you did that for eighteen, after eighteen months, you I was were, a hypocrite. You know, yeah. then I started clicking, and little things happened. Did you and, treat uh, her different in the relationship because of it? Uh, you just don't know. Yeah. But I was so into comedy and cocaine that I shut that yeah. part of my manhood off, which never really works. Mm-hmm. That never really works. You pay for that somewhere along the line. You know what I'm saying? I know I paid for it somewhere after that along the line. When you shut your manhood against something, I don't care if a woman strips. I really don't. Yeah. I would never judge yeah. a woman for that. There's thousands of circumstances. I'd rather see that. Did you see that fucking white chick the other down Laurel Canyon collecting change? That didn't look bad. I mean, she uh-huh. wasn't no... Uh, you know what I did? You did see her. I did. Okay. And I was like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck is that? I thought there was cop. Yeah. I, I had did that. she have a bicycle? Because you know I saw her, I saw her uh, uh, by the bridge with a bicycle. And on the way down, on your side. Like if I go on Gelson's yeah, to make yeah, the right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're both on the same track. Blew my mind. And I caught the light and I looked at, I don't know, Mike. Yeah, that was unusual. That's unusual. Yeah. She had a nice sweater on. Uh-huh. Like yeah, I'm, that was really weird. You know what really I thought weird. about when I saw that? What? Ted Bundy. I don't know why. That's the first night. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm like, Ted Bundy would have a field day with this fucking girl. <laughs> Jesus, right. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> you know, yeah, Ted Bundy would yeah. have that VW already in veil, yeah. about to stab her in the neck by now. Yeah, I get scared for I people. get scared for women yeah. like that. You know what? I, I don't mind if we do that. You know what? Go indoors. Right. Go indoors. Go over here to victory. And shake that ass a little bit. So what? You let somebody finger you for the small three hundred? What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, because what? they have like the downstairs, right? Because <clears throat> there's a 
One of the times I went there, I saw a girl that listened to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like the first time I went into that strip club about three years ago, I was bored to pieces. And it must have been a quarter to 11. And if I go home, my wife passed out. The whole house is quiet. I sit there with the fucking cats. You could just do that so long. It's not like I'm going to get my dick sucked. I just want to see what's crack a lag on that motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? First time I went in there, I went in there. I'm like, there's nobody in here. Not a soul. I thought this place would have like valet parking and guys in there dancing. And uh-huh. everybody in there was creeping behind the shadows. So I walked out. I went to the car and all of a sudden a girl came running after me. Come back. I love you on the podcast. I watch you on Joe Rogan. Come on. The girls know who you are. Come on. And I went in there, and she dragged me after like an hour or 30, 40 minutes, she dragged me in for a, a whatever dance. And it was okay. The dance uh-huh. was good. She was putting her pussy on my jeans and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all I kept thinking about. You're rubbing your pussy on my jeans. <laughs> I got to explain this odor now. You know what I'm saying? On my fucking jeans. Wow. And yeah. it was fun, but it was like, and then she started working me. You know, there's a room in the back. We go upstairs. And I love all that shit. Uh-huh. That's why I'm Harvey Weinstein. Negotiate. Really? Oh, I love negotiating with a bitch. And, <laughs> what? And for no reason. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm one of those guys, like, I'll just push it just to see what yeah. I can get. Yeah. I'm a creepy motherfucker like that. Wow. Like, all is being revealed. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, this happened, like, I, 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 one time I was on the train. Uh-huh. I, was, I was on the phone with Josh Wolf. 1998. I'm in New York City. I called Josh to see if I got mail. Me and Josh were living together on Sunset with his girlfriend. And I'm on the phone with Josh and blah, blah, blah. All right, listen, man, take that check deposit for me, please, because my shit's about to bounce. And he goes, where are you? I go, I'm on an ape train. I'm going up to Harlem to get some wheat. And next thing you know, a chick creeps up behind me and she starts tapping me on the shoulder. And she's like, for three dollars and, and a light, I'll suck your dick. Oh no, oh, no yeah. <laughs> right? All right? That type I see. of yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I love that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feed right into no, that I shit. No, I can see you. I'm just not doing the type that. of guy yeah. that would go up to Felicia and go, Felicia. Yeah. Yeah, then he was saying you a light on the rent. Yeah. What if? What if? Yeah. No, I know. What if you were <laughs> dropped four hundred on the floor and I stuck it in your ass when you were looking the other way? Would that take care of things for a while? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, I'm not one of those guys. But if you approach me with a deal, oh, I suck that in. I want to know particulars. I want to know guarantees. <laughs> I turn into the whitest guy you've ever met in your life. I come yeah. up with a list with glasses on. Let me ask What you. can you even guarantee? Huh? What can you guarantee? That doesn't even make sense. It's it's the guy, you have I'm no sure idea. I'm sure it's everything. I get as creepy as shit. How's your dick sucking abilities? <laughs> you know, yeah. like I interview them thoroughly. Right, right. Okay. You know, what do you need the money for? <laughs> Does there get a point where they realize you're fucking with them? Never. I'm oh, that really? good. Yeah. Oh, I'll keep them. I'll keep them on ice. Uh-huh. Just for my creepy mind to know. Because I didn't approach them. Uh-huh. They contacted me with some fucking story. Right. <laughs> we were telling the one about Ralphie May last week. God rest his soul. When I was in my house living with Terry, this girl knew Terry and everything. Mm-hmm. And called me one night. She goes, listen, I just got a movie. I need to buy it. Felicia, I had three fifty in my pocket. Mm-hmm. We were living in Hollywood. I had three dollars in my pocket, maybe. She calls me. I need fifteen hundred for SAG, and I booked this project. And if I don't get it, I can't shoot it. It's going to be my first guest star. Okay. Now, let me ask you this: If I give you the fifteen hundred, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. oh, there we go. Oh yeah. When am I going to get this? How am I right. going to get this back? Well, I'm going to get the co-star job back, and the first check I get, I'll give it to you. I go. Well, what's the co-star pay? I think it pays seven fifty. Okay, so after taxes, I'm getting four hundred. Where's the other eleven hundred? <laughs> this house is gonna get taken care of. And she's like, "Well, I don't know. I'll book another job." And then there's silence. Right. It was the creepiest thing. Yeah. There was silence, and she goes, "Well, what if maybe we could?" What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and boy, you know what I mean. Maybe we can, I can <laughs> see you somewhere. Yeah. Somebody is saying, and right when they open that door, I just attack. All right, so listen. So how good is your little pussy there? So what are you telling me right now? This is what's going to go down. And I go back, but on this situation, I had her going. Uh-huh. Like she's like, uh-huh. I, don't, I only fuck. No, 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 no. You got to suck dick for 1500 oh, no. She goes, I don't do that. No, for 1500 you got to suck a dick. 
You know what I'm saying? You can't show up with that little Filipino pussy and think I'm going to go home. She was too broke. But the funny thing was, uh-huh. she had been working me. Uh-huh. She showed up in time with a mini skirt and asked me for gas money, and she flashed that little dragon at me. Right, yeah. And I, made, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, this is not going to end up good. Right, right. And no, you know, I thought to myself, she doesn't know what she's playing with. Right. Like, you you follow the same thing? Like, she has no idea, yeah. so I'm going to give her the rope. But that night, I go to <laughs> I go to her, listen, so she goes, so where are we going to meet? I go, we'll meet at the Four Seasons in Marina Del Rey. I go, but we're in the studio. Everything's going to go down. She's like, yeah, everything. Okay. I go, call me back in an hour. Felicia, I forgot about it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know when you forget about something because yeah, you yeah. get so hot. <laughs> I'm watching 60 Minutes or something, and the phone rings, and it's Ralphie May. What are you doing? I'm downstairs. Let's go get some reefer. I run downstairs, and I'm not in Ralphie's car two minutes, and the phone rings. Mm-hmm. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. And I was playing, and I go, Ralphie, don't move the fucking car. I go, you got to hear this. I'll fill you in on it later. And I'm like, what's up? And she's like, nothing. So are we going to meet? I go, we're going to meet. I'm going to get the cash right now. I go, listen, let me ask you a question. And then when she asked me for this, she goes, so what is it that you want to do? And that right there, I had the opening. I go, I want to suck your pussy. I want you to lick my nutsack. I go, I want to light your asshole on fire. And there was a beat. And she goes, can I call you right back? <laughs> <laughs> and then she called back she goes I borrowed the money from my uncle oh, no. and then about a few days later she unfriended me on Facebook yeah. <laughs> that was the end of that shit <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that I love oh. all that yeah. nonsense yeah. Oh. there's people that think there's certain women that think they got the, the pull on you and I love when they show up like yeah. I love when they show up and try to pull like a, I know who's sincere Right. I know who's right. sincere, you know, I know, you know. Well, that's so interesting about the Harvey Weinstein thing is where I, someone put on my Facebook, what about the women that complied? Let's, let's, let's I want to know who complied. What actresses actually suck to get a, or fuck to get a part? And I'm like, I have no interest in that. Like, I don't like, because if two people are, are going to have fun with each other and oh do what God. they got to do, I don't, I care about if you know the women that say no. If you know you anything know? about Harvey Weinstein, yeah. he's got this all on tape. He's, oh he's no! Gonna, I hope. Listen to me. He's gonna come out and go, "Fuck the Weinstein company, fuck this company, fuck that company." I got tapes that'll sink a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Jeez, <laughs> I wouldn't put, doubt that. So yeah. he'll put together a yeah. compilation and just yeah. a compilation of what <laughs> of him fucking young it. actresses in the ass, get yeah. them all because he did fuck a bunch of them supposedly. Why? Well, are you, yeah, why, but he, there was yeah, a bunch of them that said, yeah, "Fuck it, go yeah. do what you need to do." How many guest star roles? How many movies? Eleven movie deal. Stick it in wherever you want. Ooh. You know he's a filthy animal. He tapes some of them, so he's gonna come out and just drop bombs. Wow. Well. He's gonna cower at the end and go because that's what you know. What I guarantee. Listen, half the people that spoke against him are just very hypocritical. They they knew what he was doing for years. And now that the boat is sinking, they jumped on. It'd be interesting what happens when that guy comes out of his rehab and he gets his story straight. That's going to be fucking interesting. Well, and I just think about like the type of person that does that is just a fucking oh, bully to oh, everybody. Oh, no, he's crazy. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's crazy, crazy to he's everybody. Gonna come yeah. out. He's 65. He's loaded. Yeah. He's loaded. He don't give a hug of no money. But you know what? You never know what he's an people Ari- actually have. You never. He's know. in Arizona right now. He's got three chicks that don't even speak English. He's gonna kill them when he's done with them two weeks from now. He's gonna come back and he goes, "I'm healed." And then mm. ABC's gonna give him two mil for an interview. And he's gonna no, go, oh, he's, fuck, he's a creepy fucking dude. Oh, but he's st- done. They want to listen. Done. He's gonna have to tell, tell his story to somebody, and that dude's gonna come back with some creepy fucking stories because all his friends turned on him at the end. Yeah, he's in there right now, going that motherfucker. Yeah. You know how many times she came over and sucked my dick for free? Yeah, well, <laughs> those days are over, my friend. Those days are over, <laughs> Those Harvey. days are long no, gone. No, guys like go. Harvey, O.J. Yeah. Simpson, yeah. they always find the freak, Felicia. Yeah. Well, most predators do. Where the fuck do you think O.J.'s been? Nobody's seen a picture of him since he got out of jail. He was playing golf. I, yeah, I saw a picture. He's having a good old time. He's He was up at the ranch. 
No. Yeah, I think yes. I saw a picture. He was with, headed to the yeah, ranch. Something was going on with like a girl on his lap. Or yeah, whatever. he was headed yeah. to the ranch. Yeah. yeah. That's a good Bro, that's a, decision. He's a sexual monster, OJ. He's been locked up for 11 years. There's a white chick, a blonde look alike right now that he's <laughs> fucking the shit out of. Because that's what he was into Jesus. all those years. All those chicks he fucked all those years afterward. Mm hmm. All look like his ex-wife, you know. If you watch the documentary, O.J. in America and the other one, they were all blonde, bro. Mm -hmm. The one in Florida, she was a cokehead. You had to see this broad. Just like the fucking chick he killed. So, yeah. Right. There's a blonde chick right now getting drilled well, by poor O.J. Well, I had a big fight with my friend Alan, and uh, uh, we had a huge fight because he was all like, well, those girls, any girl that was in the hotel room at 2 o'clock in the morning, they ought to know what's coming their way or whatever. And it's kind of like, no, not really. I mean, maybe, but that's victim blaming. You know what I mean? That's making the victim feel bad. And then I had another friend who said, you know, when I was 18, I was at spring break with a group of people, and we were all going to go somewhere, at a, and we were in the hotel lobby, and a guy uh, that I had just met was like, I got to go grab my coat. Come with me real quick. And then she got, you know, uh, in trouble in his room that way. It's like, you don't, you don't, you don't know, like, all the time. What about, and I think about as young girl comics on the road, and you have to share a condo with someone. What are you going to say, like, if something happens at 2 in the morning, you know? Like, things happen... And some, and you can't police where you're at all the time. You, you know, know me, Felicia. I know honest. you're I'm very honest. contrary. No, 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 no. I'm very honest. A lot of girls came back to the hotel room with me that thought they were just going to do a line of coke and leave too. Yeah. I yeah. tricked them in there, I lured them into the spider's web. Well, don't say too much, Joey. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but no, no, right? No, no, you know, no, nothing like that. But no. you never know because people are now so hypersensitive. It's a hard to joke about because people are going to... That's why, you know, Bob Weinstein, now someone's pointing their finger at the brother. It's like, well, you know, everyone's going to point fingers now. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. It really is a crazy world we live in. And interesting at the same time. It doesn't even... Like, it, when you read the stories, they don't even make sense. It's like, who would go... Who would, like... And, and not not the girl, my God. Like, who would, like, think to change into a robe... Mid meeting, yeah, a predator, someone who's used to getting their fucking way, and be like, get into a hot like that doesn't even, they don't even seem real. He pissed in front of the one chick, you know. It was just he like jerked crap. off in a potted plant, <laughs> <laughs> and like in a hallway, in a hotel hallway. I've done that. Yeah, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Not in a hotel drum dog. Uh, in a potted plant? Sure. You're sitting there at 3 in the morning. You're looking for something to come in. <laughs> no, the plant no. looks thirsty. You know what I'm saying? No. You shoot it right to the root. Next thing you know, the plant grows six inches. Everybody's happy. It's sunny in the fucking room. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, no. Or the plant dies. <laughs> 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 and that's the one marker wherever Joey goes, a, a pot of I, dies. I've, <laughs> I've sat with Lee various nights. <laughs> I've had uh, Kate Quigley on here, and we discussed different situations we've been on in our lives. And like I was very naive for years until I got out of Jersey, and then I started meeting different people. Like I'm getting my hair cut one day. I'm 19. I'm in Basalt, Colorado. I live in a house with three guys. We got four different bedrooms. House is beautiful. And next door to us, we got two chicks that are fucking torture. I'm talking about torture from Milwaukee. Two Italian chicks, dark. Both of them had so much hair on their pussy that it came out of the top of their shorts. Remember the eighties? Nobody right, shaved that yeah, fucking yeah. monster. No, they were. It was nobody like a, shaved it was that a monster. Monkey. Yeah, yeah. And she, her, she had so when she put shorts on one time, and I saw the top of her pussy, I almost fainted. Really? You know, almost fainted. The other day, Marie T, I'm sitting on the phone, and I'm sitting there minding my own fucking <laughs> business, and this little young girl walks in, maybe eighteen years old. Remember the day it was 100 degrees? Yeah. I'm sitting there minding my own business with E.T. And this girl didn't know it. They're sexual brothers. <laughs> she had tight, tight, tight shorts on. Oh. And they were gray. <laughs> she had like a white t-shirt on, no titties, no bra, nipples popping right out. Very cute. 
She walked in, she got like a nice tea or something, but she had a sweat bead going right through her little pussy. Walked right in the reed tea with it. You can see where it was sweating. Right into the shorts. <laughs> I was, and you know what? That's so attractive. I can't look you in the eye as you no, finish no, this no, story. It makes no, quite no, an no, impression no. on you, Joey. Oh, yes, it does. A girl with a, sw- a sweaty that's snatch. That's after one second, and that's the description. Walking down the street. You should, are you fucking kidding me? She just walked from fucking Ventura to Colfax. <laughs> And that monkey got all sweaty. It's nice Were and her little feet she, dirty? The, her heels ooh, a little bit dirty? But she was 18. What are you going to do that? You just fucking, yeah, yeah. you just fucked them up for life. Well, I read that Kate Beckinsale, uh, he invited her up to his room and she was 17. You know, everyone has their twist, but when you, when your compulsion becomes predatory, and and the thing is why I got this argu- in such a big argument with my guy friend, it's, it's like you don't understand it's not just men by the way but people that are predatory they can sense who they can corner you know what i mean they can sense who who they can uh as you like to say uh but it sounded like weasel down i'll tell you something no and i never thought i would say something like this but look i'm 54 i can tell you this i've met six or seven female sexual brothers in my life that thinking oh, yeah. back now, today, who I am today, going, wow, I didn't see that. that. Yeah. <clears throat> we had a girl at my high school that I could look you in the face. I can tell you whatever story I want. I could be jokey with you. She blew and fucked every wrestler in high school, whether they were a freshman, sophomore, and she fucked them in the wrestling room. She was like uh, the chick from Sex in the City and Porky's. The guy was fucking her up in the stands, and she uh-huh. was yelling, the, the hot one, the old one. Mm-hmm. If you watch Porky's, that's her giving up that pussy. She looked good then, too. Yeah. But uh, to this teacher for four years, she never fucked me because I didn't wrestle. Mm-hmm. But she knew <laughs> that she knew that I would be hanging out doing coke with guys, and we'd uh-huh. drop them off at her house. She'd open up the door and wave at us. Like, you think about that today. That woman got a watch. They honored her. You know, they for what? Had, for like the gym teacher of the decade and shit. Oh, she's a gym teacher? She was a gym teacher at yeah. my school. And uh, you think yeah. about it now, today. You think about, listen, man, I'm horny like every other fucking guy. I got my own fucking sense. You know what I'm saying? I got no, uh, I never fell out of a tree with a bag of M&Ms or nothing like that. I'm not a fucking rapist. That's never been my game. Mm-hmm. But I've had some fun in my life. You know what I'm saying? Who the right. fuck am I to judge somebody? But. There's some cold blooded chick that goes out out there, Felicia, and you know it. You no, were at the front sure. lines. Yeah, for once you've sure. been at the front yeah. lines, yeah. once you see it, like I was staying in the bathroom just now, I went in there to piss, I was washing my hands. I'm like, well, I'm like, what can I tell Felicia? You know, I'm thinking, and I'm, and I, all of a sudden, twat, my, my junior year before I quit high school that summer, I was going through a rough time financially. But it was on my own doing. No, don't feel sorry for me, because I love cocaine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love Coke, and every time we went out, it was $50. Yeah. And the kids I grew up with had money. I didn't have money, so I was trying to keep up with them every fucking night. So I was broke, and I would you know, I would do what I had to do. And this guy, Lou Donato, asked me if I wanted a job being a doorman at his massage parlor. Oh, really? And it was made right up the hill from where I lived. I'm like, yeah. I, like, he would tell me every night, just pick one on the way out if you want to fuck one of them. Even yeah. at that age, like I just Well I something creepy, like and I, I like sex. Everybody yeah, likes their yeah. dick sucked and their balls. I mean everybody. You know, it's an interesting thing as a woman to talk about sex and having had the experience of uh, uh for a couple of years working uh, as a stripper. I mean I hate to it sounds so bland when you say it, but I, I want people to understand like I did like a wet t-shirt contest. I won money. I won like three hundred dollars in nineteen eighty-two. That's like a thousand dollars now. Today. Yeah, it's like was so much money back <clears> then. <throat> and then I did the contest a couple times, and then the guy's like, "No more contest. You're gonna work here." And uh, so I remember, and I and the thing, the story is, I was married right out of high school to someone, and then he became abusive, and then I had nowhere to go, and so the, I went and did the wet t-shirt contest. And that's how I got into stripping. And I remember, uh, and this goes back to you saying some women are predatory. When I say predators, I'm not talking just about men. There are people that are sexually 
predatory, including women. And I remember I went down in the basement to go to the dressing room, and I could hear, like, scuffling going on. And I turned the corner, and it's these two biker chicks, like, Cripple Creek kind of biker chicks. Like, they were the tough chicks, like, you can imagine in the 80s, early 80s. And they were beating the fuck out of this young, kind of fresh-looking stripper, not much older than myself. I mean, kicking her in the head beating the fuck out of her and i was all like "Ooh, i don't want to participate in this right so i sneak back up the staircase and i go out into the club again and the man and it was like six o'clock in the evening because i was came to do my first shift and the manager's like i told you get down there get dressed and i was like i can't say to him some shit's going down because then i'm going to be the chick getting the shit kicked out of me right so i remember sitting like on the stairway and these chicks coming up and they were like, did you see anything? And I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm just here my first day, right? And those chicks were predatory. Those chicks would steal the rings off men's fingers when the, they got fingered. I mean, these were some serious... They, their boyfriends were all biker... These were like the biker chicks that were stripping back then. And uh, so I totally get what you're saying. Like, when Jean Pompa tells that story in Pervs about... The 14-year-old girl who who's fucking her stepbrother, and then they as a team are trying to fuck him. The girl is predatory, right? Like, there's some shit going on in that house, but both those kids are now being predatory to Jean Pompa. And it's, when, when someone tells a story like that, or when a man says to a, a, another woman or says to another, another man, no, I knew this chick, and that chick was, you know, it wasn't me, it wasn't, I totally believe uh, when men say that, you know what I mean? Some chicks are predatory. Absolutely. I don't think <clears throat> I've ever been with one. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about women that I've met, that I've been around that years later. I've heard a thousand stories. And you're like, Come Oh, yeah, on. yeah. And you're like, are you serious? And they're like, oh, my God. You know, you should have seen. I have a friend who's predatory. A really predatory. Now that I think about it, a comedian chick. Yeah. And she moves in waves. Like she she's just like a guy. Yeah. She would move she would be a regular female comic. Mm -hmm. And then she'd go to an outside bar afterward instead of going out with the staff. And she'd zero in on the guy. Go home, let the guy basically rape her. A her ass, light a pussy on the you know, that was her mm -hmm. thing. Mm hmm When she got hammered. And so she never had to see the guy again. That was her freak. Right. Years later, we heard the stories when we went back. And they're like, what happened? I, was, I don't know. And they're like, we got to talk to you about something. Remember the year you came and she was leaving? Yeah, that night she had a threesome. She would pick random people. Never at the comedy club. She was very. So when you're that. Predatory, yeah. No, when you're that thoughtful about the process. Right. You're okay. predatory. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so she, instead of, you know, she would be right here with us telling us, I haven't gotten laid in three years. Mm -hmm. Guys don't want to hit up on me. But then at night, instead of going to Hollywood and picking up dick, she would drive to Calabasas and go to, like, the dirtiest bar in Calabasas, walk in, zero in on a guy, take him mm -hmm. home, let her do whatever. And she'd get up before the guy woke up. And would never see that person again. She'd never even go to that neighbor again. Right, right. That's, and I found that years later. She was even taking money in some towns. Of course she was. Can you imagine yeah. this shit? No, years I can't later, imagine. Later. Yeah. So now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, she was very. Look, sex is different for different people. Like, like when people are saying, "Who did comply? Who did fuck Harvey?" You know, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I give no so fucks. Angry. Yeah, like I know people are so like, what do you care about? I care about the women that were actually harmed by this or felt manipulated, and all those <laughs> chicks were between the age of eighteen and twenty-five. I don't give a fuck if some chick likes to get her freak on with some other fucking twisted fuck. I don't care about that. Let me give some shout outs here. Brett B, Cleo, Nosmo King, Kara Rot, Quadcast Courtney, Bob Lalingus. One by One Podcast, Crystal Oaks, and Bill Patchouli. I think that's the name. You know I love you, cocksucker. I got to look twice. Don't forget tomorrow night, Lexington on Broadway. 
the party starts, bring the fucking roller skates and the reefer. I'm there all weekend, cocksucker. Sorry about that. Okay. I had to get this out there. Lisa, yeah, what's going on with you? You looking good? I thought your wife was leaving for three days. No, she had, she had the best uh, business trip ever. It was like 10 hours. But I have a funny news story, if you what, wanted to hear it. What? Uh, there was a restaurant in California. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. You, don't want to, you don't want to talk about that? Who gives a fuck? I thought it was... Yeah, my chicken. They were serving chicken. They were serving they, Popeye's chicken. Yeah. They were doing what? They, they were, were serving, serving Popeye's, Popeye's chicken. chicken at the restaurant? Yeah. How about the freak that was squirting all over children's flutes in the school district? Did you see that story? No, yes. no, 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 no. People are so weird. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> no, that uh, that I was very interested when I saw the little parts of your movie. I, I wanted to see how people were going to react to it this week, and that's why I wanted you to come on and hopefully get some people down there because their reaction to that, like my reaction to it when I saw little bits and pieces online, I thought it was a great idea. I love the idea the just the peep show, the honesty that goes in there. Oh yeah, because it's an odd. When someone shows you their pussy, you you can't lie to that's that a, person. That's a late night. Yeah, that's a Showtime late TV show. Okay, the guy comes in every week, and it's cast around regulars. Mm-hmm. And you put two newbies in there. Maybe they become regulars later. They come back. You know, maybe she talks them into sticking a finger up their ass, and they break <laughs> down and start crying and run out of there. And then they come back a year later, and, you know, Suzanne Little Bake is like, oh, you come back. Mm-hmm. You like that little finger up the ass, didn't you, bitch? You know, and he starts breaking down. Whatever. This is right. This is a great no, idea. No, it's definitely like taxi cab yeah, confession this is, this meets. Is a yeah, 15-minute, one of those 15-minute inserts. Absolutely. One o'clock in the morning. I agree. To, I agree. Pop it. Yeah. That's it. Two, two guests, maybe a rotating guy, some guy that comes in and gives you a ton of money and mm-hmm. lights his balls on fire and does something really creepy like a a cheese grater on his nutsack or something like that. Something that people are like, what the fuck just happened? Right. And later on, you realize he's the CEO <laughs> of a company that makes a half a billion dollars a year or something. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the interesting part about it. All walks of life that go in there. Yeah. From the common drug addict to the successful guy that's home that's been married for 30 years and never cheated on his wife. Mm-hmm. But that's his little dirty secret. He always has an out that there's a glance between them. Mm-hmm. That's his out. Right. What are you talking about, Ali? I walked in to get a magazine for a friend of mine at work, and I saw this booth, and I walked in, and the chick showed me a pussy, and I put $2 in there. That's all that happened. Right. It was a glass. I couldn't do anything. What are yeah. you talking about? You're always innocent. It is interesting, those guys that do that. Like, yes, even I'm at telling you. That's clubs, what I want right? to Yes. Yeah, yeah that, that they really have like a, <clears throat> an affinity towards a few of the dancers. There's, there's guys that go yeah, to the fucking, yeah. there's guys that go to strip yeah. clubs. And we'll Captain put, Save a Hose. They, no, no, no. <laughs> there's guys that go to strip clubs, and they'll put money on the thing but never make contact with you even though you'll pull out your thumb mm-hmm. for them to put it in they won't you yeah some those guys, guys are not down at all yeah so it's those are the guys yeah. those are yeah. the guys that this is as evil as it gets uh-huh. i love my wife this is as bad as i could be right that's what's really i think that years ago i read something years ago that some people were trying to get strip clubs out of the town, somewhere in like Iowa, somewhere mm-hmm. where it's very Christian. Right. And the argument was that it's proven that in communities where there's strip clubs, more marriages last longer. Because, oh, really? Because the, the common threat is that the guy's not going to fuck his secretary. The common threat is that the guy's going to come in once every 60 days. Right. It's just a fantasy. Yeah. I'm 50. You come, you're 22, you sit on my lap, I feel your titty, I give you an extra 50, you let me rub your pussy, I squirt all over my fucking, I squirt all over my pants. All right, keep it going. And I go home, right or wrong, that's yeah. it. No, yeah. That's as no, evil as it yeah, gets. Yeah, some people, that is the... I don't even want yeah. you to touch me, yeah. don't even touch my dick. Right, right. Me just touch, patting your little yeah. monkey is going to make me bust in my fucking pants, and just that little heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Is what I need <laughs> to keep me sane. Hey, everyone's different. Everybody's different. Every, everyone's different. I get up, yeah. I go in the bathroom, I wash my dick off, 
I give the little black guy that gives you the hand towel uh -huh. in there. <laughs> I give him three dollars for that look. <laughs> don't look. Don't look at my dick. I'm gonna wash it in the mirror here. Right <laughs> <laughs> you never wash your dick in front of a valet. I've done it no. a thousand times. Are you, are you, <laughs> <laughs> well, you will drop your pants for anything, though. <laughs> Why not just go home? Because <laughs> then you're home. <laughs> and let me tell you something. So you give this guy three, four dollars, no, you wipe no, no, your like, dick down. Oh, why, you get in your why not just clean it at home? Because by the time you get home, you don't want no evidence. You clean the jizz off in the bathroom. You stop at the bakery. You bring all your wife flowers. <laughs> and nothing happens and nobody knows nothing. Yeah. And nobody's hurt. Right. You cheat on nobody. It's pretty. A sad. lot of people live their lives That's like that. That's a fucking that, tremendous yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, a lot of people. Where they live just their lives tread like on a little bit, Charlie, and nobody mm -hmm. gets their feelings hurt. Right. Yeah. After a while, you even tell your wife, "I went to the strip club to right. stop in there for a beer." Was your girlfriend there, Vanessa? Oh yes, you ready to marry me? Yeah. But you're still together. The wife knows you ain't right. leaving. You know what I'm saying? I do think uh, you've met. Obviously, you both have Susanna, and I just think give her. She has so much like the biggest balls ever that she did that that she had this idea and then actually w was able to have really cool conversations and being so vulnerable with being naked and now season two yeah. somebody's got a fucker in that boot no stop <laughs> somebody's gonna come from behind like gorilla fucker with those little shoes on and shit oh my god and come on one of the tattoos and shit to really <laughs> She's got awesome tattoos, by yeah, the way. Somebody, God, I want to get tattoos. Ah, uh, just a good load on one of those sad tattoos and walk out of there like you're on the joint. You Not that so. you've thought about it. Oh, no, I was say, are you auditioning Joey? <laughs> <laughs> You gotta take Lee to a strip. You guys gotta do that you so you can listen, talk about listen, it. We can't talk about it on the air because. It's not good. No, no bueno. <laughs> Trust me. You don't want to know. Last time Lee crossed the street, it really? wasn't bueno. No. Yeah. yeah. And then, 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 well, you know what I'm saying. Do you ever just go wildly? Do you ever like what's like? Not really. No. <laughs> I mean, like hey, this is as wild as it comes. Mean, how much more wild could he get? <laughs> he wants to get wild. He's yeah. nine. He's twenty nine. He's ready to bust a nut. <laughs> he wants to hang out with. Luke Skywalker and fucking <laughs> two live crew. When he saw that video, his eyes lit up. Oh he goes, God, that was that's who cool. I got to hang out with, those guys. He knows. He's dying to hang out with yeah. two live crew and go out there. And I don't blame him. Just to yeah, be 29 on, again and what you live and learn. You're like, you know what? Would you want to be 29 again? And live through that whole thing again? <laughs> no, but one thing I do know, if I was 29, I fell in love when I got divorced. Like, I was such a pussy. Like, I was such a fucking pussy. Like, I'm writing a book, and I was actually outlining that the other day. Like, and I even said, what the fuck is wrong with me? <clears throat> there was this bar in Boulder that I was the host of on Tuesday nights. Uh -huh. The Boulder Broker. Tremendous. On Wednesday nights, it was chicks 40 and over that went there to suck cock and do blow. <laughs> They called it, I'm, I'm, I wish I was lying to you. Okay. Okay, Boulder had, <laughs> listen, Boulder had this thing called FAC. It was on Arapahoe Boulevard. It was at a hotel there, the Hilton. Who the fuck knows what it's called today? In 1985, from 1978 like, to 1985, Playboy called it one of the hottest spots in the country if you wanted to get your dick sucked on Fridays. <laughs> This was way before valets. On a Friday uh -huh. at 12 o'clock, you'd be driving on Arapahoe, and you could see people already running to get, like, a table in there. Mm -hmm. It was that much of a dick-sucking establishment. That's where you... It was a strip joint, though, right? No. Oh. It was the bar at a hotel. Oh, really? This was the chic place if you were... 25 yeah. to 40, you did blow. Uh -huh. And you wanted to suck dick and talk about lies and talk about your yacht and boat and Houston and shit. Just tremendous shit. This was just crazy shit, which nobody even remembers. What else was there that? I never went there. Oh, you never went in? Not one time. Yeah. What year is this? This probably went from 70 something to about 88. It was popular. Oh, really? Remember how much coke there was in Colorado? Oh, my God. I remember when I met Jeff Valdez, and he took me, uh, he said, let's have lunch. He has this comic that Joey hates, and for good reason. And uh, and we went to a lunch, 
<coughs> and on the table, and it's all stockbrokers everywhere, like a busy place. He would just pour the coke out on the lunch, and I was like, what "People the have no what idea the? It was what crazy." People have no idea yeah. what 1983 to 88 was in this country. Yeah, it was crazy. Then it locked down. I went back to New York. My buddy did a line of coke in the bathroom. They asked him to leave. I was in shock. I was like, are you people serious? You know, we used to do coke on the tables because that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. People doing coke at tables. You order dessert and you put two lines of coke out <laughs> and you rolled it up. Nobody said nothing to you. I mean, you couldn't sit there like Tony Montana, mm -hmm. but you could do it under control. Nobody was saying nothing yeah, to you. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a different yeah. fucking world. Yeah. Was no, nice. that bar was, was crazy, but there was something that I was going to tell you about that area. Like... I can't remember fucking now, but that FAC was hotter than shit. I mean, there would be droves of people there. Did you ever go to the Limelight in New York? The church? Yeah. Yes. I went there once when I moved in 94, right when it was like, at, went to the end. And that was the, cra and I'd seen some crazy stuff and that place was crazy. That was crazy. Just everything. Things that people were I doing in the went, bathrooms. It was like, what? Yeah, I never fuck? went to none of those crazy, mm -hmm. like, Venus flytrap where you pay $100 and people fuck. Mm -hmm. I never seen none of that growing up. I didn't like that shit at all. It used to drive me crazy. Like I said, I worked for Louis Donato in that massage parlor. And there was a girl that would come up to me every night and she'd go, when are you going to let me suck your dick? I want you to come on my hair. <laughs> and I would go leave there every night going, who wants them to come on your hair? I would go, yeah. who does these disgusting things? Like, I didn't understand so much about fucking sex that I met the fucking girl, the, the one I met in Florida. And after I was with her like three months, she told me a story that for three years she had sex with a guy and he paid her rent, her car payment. Mm -hmm. Like, I, my head almost exploded. Like, as open-minded as I am, my head almost exploded. Why? Because I'd never heard of such a thing. I'd never heard of such a thing. Like, in my world, I didn't hear of such a thing. Uh -huh. What did he get in turn for this rent? Pussy like a motherfucker. Twice a month. Did he have sex? No, he come over and buy a chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, he had sex. Okay, I, I didn't know. The guy know. was married... <laughs> The guy I mean, was, was the, stripper. the guy was married with a family, right? With kids, and he paid her nice rent, bought her a car, paid her tuition. Oh my god! And he come over twice a week and just do whatever he'd want for like six years. Right. But she got an education. Yeah. Hey, everyone's different. Everyone's different. She got a master's degree. Is she? reality yeah no what are you gonna fucking do listen all that stuff man is what makes that whole sex world because nobody knows really what your freak is nobody knows yeah nobody for sure knows. yeah i never let nobody get the freak out of me like i wish when i was 21 i would have went somewhere where they would have stuck sponges up my ass why because at least now i would have had something i would have liked like something different like everybody <laughs> eats pussy with a mask on or, <laughs> or something. <laughs> you, you hang out with you hang out with Tom Cruise, on all wise shut. You go to some house and there's chicks walking around with masks. Oh right, right. Like, I never went to one of those. Oh, you things. never did. I don't think I ever did one of those. No, yeah. like, none of that shit ever happened to me. Like I always got caught with the chick with a disease, venereal disease. Like that's what I got. Some chick that after I was with you, she made a good piece of pussy, but then I scratched for a month yeah. afterward. <laughs> uh, scratched and I lived in denial. You know what I'm saying? What's the kinkiest thing you've ever done, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've always been afraid of strip clubs. I mean, I don't. Why I, are you afraid of them? Lee? I feel like they're. I feel like they. The strippers. Like, it's always weird. It might. It's been weird to pay to get in, and then like you can't really touch them, right? You could go and do whatever the fuck you want now and oh. the strip club. Party. And I always feel. I always felt like they'd hate you. They have the control ones, and then they have the ones where. Because I think even at that place, they have cameras, but there's really nobody upstairs. <laughs> Listen, me, I like to cut through the muss and the fuss. <laughs> I want a good show. What's yeah. a good show means? Oh, let the pieces mean. fall where they may. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, what do, do you, you mean by a good show? Like, What do you charge to go upstairs? Uh -huh. What's the going right to go? We charge two hundred sixty. Oh, you just want to negotiate? No, I don't want to negotiate. I go, what, what do you want to do? What, do you, what happens? What goes on back there? Well, there's $60 a dance in there, a song. But if you gave me 80, I'll give you a good dance. What's a good dance? I want to know what I'm getting for my fucking 
I want to know what I'm getting for my tax deduction. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you know, she goes, Oh, is this research? Yeah, no, what do you want to do back then? What goes on over there? And this one goes on, nothing. But if you want to be in a more personal <laughs> situation, we get to go upstairs and it's 265 for a half hour, for 20 minutes. What do you think? Well, listen, a lot can happen in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know you. But I'm the type of dude that I, I, don't want, I want the pieces for, to fall where they may. Nobody says nothing. We wrap it up, we clean up, and nobody knows nothing. What do you think? Well, well listen. What do you want, 260? I'm going to throw you four bills. I don't want to hear a fucking word. I want you to go upstairs and rock my fucking world. Absolutely. You go upstairs, they do a little nice dancing. I don't want, listen, don't hold on to the panties for that long. <laughs> I didn't come here to see Venus fucking, I didn't hear, come here to see Victoria's Secret. I came here to see that fucking dragon of love. You understand me? <laughs> and then dance a little bit for another, like another 30 seconds, then back that ass up. What's that song by the black chick? With the fucked up head to the English chick. Hold on, roll up to the bumper, baby. No, the limousine. Come on, dog. No, the, Nicki Minaj. No, no. this is the original. Who? Bo, put on YouTube. Roll up to the bumper. All right. Look who this is. You're gonna, you're gonna die. All right. Okay. And I want to see the video, Lee. I don't want to hear the song. I want to see the right. video. Please. Stop looking me in the eye when you're negotiating sex, Ooh. though. You. Ooh. right? <laughs> <laughs> you like it, don't no, you? It like, turns you on. Why is he staring at me? There's a way to do it that actually turns women on. It is kind of, They've never what? heard it. It's They've not, never the, it's heard not it. that it's not that it's like you're mesmer like you're listen, hypnotizing listen, me. Look, mean, there there it from is. The police, listen, let's cut this shit. You haven't been laid in six weeks. Let me throw you the small oh three hundred. More than chair, six so. weeks. Is it Grace Jones? Let me yeah, put on Grace <laughs> okay, okay. You ever see this? Uh uh-uh. uh. Watch the video. This is Grace Jones. She's the original. Mickey Minaj. Uh, nope. What? Mickey Minaj. Watch this. What? What's Mickey Minaj? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Look at this. This is style. This is when we're, some women didn't give a fuck and she was one of them. Look at this. Look at this savage. You think she gave a fuck for Alicia? She gave a This is neo-Nazi shit. She she knew about Trump before anybody. She's just very androgynous, you know. Oh my God, this yeah. is tremendous. Yeah. You know what you do now? Go home and watch Boomerang. Holly Berry. Robin Givens. Robin Givens. Holly Berry. Her. Uh-huh. The name of the fragrance is like vagina. Uh-huh. Because it's her fragrance. Uh-huh. And they're like, what do you want it to smell like? And they're all like, we want it to smell minty in this. And Grace Jones has a mink on, fucking throwing heat. And the guy goes, so what do you think it should smell like? And she just looks at the scientist and she goes, 
Let me tell you what it should smell like. And she gets up and digs deep and picks up her long black legs and takes her little thong and goes over to the scientist and puts the underwear right in his face. And he's sitting there with the underwear in his face. And he doesn't even want to touch the underwear. He goes like this. And he goes, I quit. Right? So he <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> so he gets up. He goes this way. Eddie Murphy catches them. Now they're trying to see what to do with the underwear. Uh-huh. Okay, so somebody, <laughs> Holly Berry. How many possible options could there be? Holly Berry pushes the underwear away, uh-huh. and some other guy takes it and passes it on to this guy. And that guy takes it and passes it on to this guy. And all of a sudden, remember when we were kids, the 7-Up guy? Uh-huh. Young Cola, the black, big black dude that was bald. He appeared in a couple James Bond movies. Oh, okay, movies. yeah, yeah, yeah. He took the underwear, sniffed them, <laughs> looked around, and put them in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Felicia, always a pleasure to have you Thank on. Thank you very much. What Friday night, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock Friday night at the Regal Theater. Come see uh, my movie, Perv, starring Susanna Lee, has Felipe Esparza, Joey Myself, Diaz, Paul, Paul Provenza, Provenza, Emily Jimmy D. Schubert. Gordon. Yeah, Go on down there. Yeah. I think this, it's a nice place around there. You can eat. So Absolutely, get down there early. Yeah. Take your wife out to eat. Bring a glove with you in case you want to bang one out in the movie theater. In case it takes you back. You <laughs> do know what, what you got to do. Just don't sit next there to me. There was another place I went to that shocked me as a young man. Uh-huh. I went to a place. And this happens to a lot of people. And this isn't talked about either. But this happens a lot. I never even spoke about it. Uh-huh. I talk about it now. Am I affected by it? No. But looking back, it's a reality. One night, we're hanging out on a Saturday night, blah, blah, blah. What are we doing tomorrow? I'm going to watch football. What are you doing? We were in high school. Uh-huh. Had to be like, uh, I had dropped out, but these guys were seniors. I had Sunday nights off. And one night, some guy goes, why don't we go to whatever it was. I don't know what the name of the town was, maybe 20 minutes away. And on Sunday nights at like an old movie theater, they showed porn. And I'm like, absolutely. I, I never went to a porno movie theater. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen a porno in years. There's a bunch of guys, they get drinking there. Mm-hmm. You could drink, you could smoke dope in there, the word on the street. Let's go down there. I thought I was going to go down there and it'd be like mixed, fucking dark, creepy. The floors were sticky. Mm-hmm. And you'd go in the bathroom. Every time you go in the bathroom, the same guy would pop up to you in the urinal. And he'd glance over at your dick for a little while. And then he'd like bump into you to make believe like you, so he could see your dick in full view, Felicia, tremendous. Yeah. You don't know what it's like to get bumped by a guy to see your dick. And Did you he, negotiate with him? No. He, <laughs> just, he just ran into the bathroom and he bangs it out in there. Oh, really? Like it was one of those guys. Oh, he would just really? Live, he would just live That there. was his kink. That was his kink. And you know where else I saw that? San Francisco Airport, 1985. Oh, really? Like a congressman, it like was, how they do. It was wide open then. Yeah. There was no, think of an airport with no TSA. There was nothing. Yeah. If Felicia was flying, I could walk her up to the gate in those days. Yeah. That's how wide open flying was. So I'll never forget, I was stuck at an airport in San Fran for like seven hours, SFO. And I saw a guy in the morning that I thought was looking at my dick. <laughs> you pop in there, and he pops right up next to you. But then I washed my hands left. About three hours later, I see the same guy in the fucking bathroom. I see him walking in the bathroom. Well, let me see what this guy's doing. Sure enough, I go up there. Jesus, he fell for the bait. He comes next to me, and he stands next to me, and he's peeing. He ain't peeing. He, he's out of pee. Mm-hmm. He's just looking at my dick. And then finally, when I went to wash my hands, I watched him in the mirror. And I watched how he would. It was fucking tremendous. He would go on a urinal, jerk off, go back, look at a man's dick, jerk off. He would do it like three times, then go get something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the moral of the story. <laughs> that's the moral of the story. I'll see you motherfuckers. Lexington, Kentucky. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What's up, dog? Why do we no, want to... Yeah, don't worry, but I had this. Don't stop me. I'm talking okay, to these no people. Worry. I'll see you this week in Lexington, Kentucky. And don't forget, this is the weekend of your life, all right? You got fucking baseball. You got the, the, the Yankees against Houston, what, tomorrow? No, Friday. Yeah, they're taking a day off tomorrow. Tomorrow they're flying to Houston. That means Friday and Sunday, or Friday and Saturday, they're going to play in Houston. And then you got the Dodgers. Check the Dodgers score. What's going on with the Let's Dodgers? See. 
And it, football's kicking off. And football's kicking off. Listen to me. Basketball. This, basketball's on right now. If you're going to make some do re me, this is the time to do it. Why make picks and tell your buddies you went eight for eight if you ain't going to win no fucking money, all right? If you're watching the game, it's time to make money. Oh, what happened? Chicago's one three to two, so it's perfect. It's three to one. Anyway, my book is the industry leading website that hooks you up with all your betting needs, and with their great odds, fast payouts, and decades of expertise, you can bet with confidence. Your team doesn't even have to win; they just need to cover the spread. What are you waiting for? Lay down some cash and win big. If you if your team sucks, do yourself a favor. And bet against them, like some people should do. If they lose, you'll make money. And if they win, you'll still be happy. Where you bet is as important as what you're betting on. That's why I'm merging you to make your way to mybookie.ag. I trust them, but I don't have to. Take my word for it. Check them out yourself. They have in-game, live betting, and mobile site that makes wagering on the go easier than ever. You can also check out their online casino if you'd rather just play a few hands of blackjack or roll dice or craps. There you go, Lee. Knock yourself out. Go, join now, and my bookie will match your deposit with up to 100% bonus. Did you hear what I said to you? Join now, and my bookie will match your deposit with up to 100% bonus. Just use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, to activate the offer. Visit mybookie.ag. Use promo code CHURCH today. Plain and simple. You ready? You play, you win, you get paid. I also want to thank Onnit, the industry leader in supplements. Alpha Brain, you're a little fucked up lately. Maybe you got kicked in the head. Maybe you need some fucking clarity. Go get a jar of Alpha Brain. I guarantee it'll help you. You got 100% money back guarantee. And we don't want the product delivered right to your fucking house. That's it, and that's that. Again, mybookie.ag. Again, honor.com. I want to thank Felicia Michael. Thank Wish you. you luck and congratulate you. And I want to thank the Christ Killer. You know I love him with all my heart. <laughs> and I want to thank you motherfuckers for supporting the show. See you next Monday. Have a great weekend. Stay black. Speaking of some dirty animals, here you go.